And then there's people that just want to cash in on the um, the social gains that can be had from identifying as transgender. As soon as they do it, they get all this new attention. You know, usually you'll see it from uh, kids that have autism or even Down syndrome. Oh, you'll see it with people that aren't very popular. All of a sudden, they become you know transgender, and oh, they're the talk of the town. The the big story uh, is Ron DeSantis, Republican governor of the state of Florida, deciding uh, he signed an order basically barring biological males from competing in girls' high school sports. Yeah. Uh, you know the the announcement itself was met with what you would expect. You know, people on the far left. Oh, this guy is a bigot. He hates <laughs> he hates girls and he hates boys. Apparently, that is remarkable. Yeah. That's <laughs> very impressive. <laughs> um, and you know, and you know, conservatives. I think you know, I'm I'm obviously a little biased, but I think justifiably so. Laud that decision, like. Uh, it is, I, I'll be the first to admit, I think it's a very tricky subject. Um, but when it comes to like sports, particularly sports, which, uh, you know, I've often heard described to me, sports is one of the last few true meritocracies in America. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And given that, it's like, well, is it, a st are you whittling away at the definition of a meritocracy if you're allowing biological males to compete in girls' sports <laughs> and all this hmm. hubbub? Um, what I wanted to ask you guys, uh, and Mike, I'll kick this over to you because I know you've written about this before, yeah. but just sort of like, what what's the uh, what's the end game for the left when it comes to like really pushing for having biological boys in girls sports? Like, what's what's the what's the upside to this fight? <laughs> well, as is the case with most of the issues that they push, they actually they don't know where the end game is. They have this imaginary place in their heads, and they don't realize what's actually going to happen. You it's know. Like the dog that finally catches the ice cream truck. Yeah. What does he do with it <laughs> exactly. once he catches it? Yeah. So, you know, what they're aiming for, what they think legitimately that, you know, there's there's no biological differences, there's no advantages. And if there are, oh, we could just get rid of those with some, you know, hormone therapy or something like that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's just not the case. Where this ends in reality is with men dominating all of men's sports and then men dominating all of women's oh, sports. Oh, I was hoping that's where you yeah. were going with this. <laughs> this is, we had a fantastic conversation about this in the newsroom not yeah. long ago. Yeah. Sorry, Q, I just got excited. No, that's, I mean, that's, that's it. I mean, not every, so when a transgender athlete, you know, a, a biological male joins women's sports, you know, some men are just like not very good athletes. So sometimes they don't, you know, get first place. But, you know, any man that's trained just as hard as like a woman that's comparable, he will have an advantage over her a hundred times out of a hundred times. So, you know, the more of these guys you get into women's sports, the more likely they are to dominate it on a whole. So yeah, it, it becomes an arm race, yeah. right? One team yes. gets one one big dude. Yeah. Exactly. Every other team yeah, there's wants a, there's one, those and photos. then you get one more. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, the, pho the, the viral photo. Heights there's like stuff. a seven foot guy. We did that a, a couple years ago. Yeah, yeah. Like a women's college basketball team. So, yeah, Josh. But then why? Why though? Like I, I, I get what Mike's saying. Like um, what they are doing. But like yeah. I, I, I guess me just personally, I struggle to see uh, what they can gain from this fight. You know, like I, I, I get the the point. But I just don't see the the gains. So I I tend to think of there's some point where you transition from political explanations to psychological explanations to spiritual explanations, mm. and I think I end up, I don't think I I end up with a spiritual explanation at this point because it, it's so bizarre. <laughs> Um, you know, in Romans, the Apostle Paul said, in professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, mm. and the arrogant the post enlightenment arrogance that's out there uh <laughs> that, that that we have discovered so we discovered science in the enlightenment science has made us all powerful and uh now we can actually change the makeup of human gods. beings we can yeah. be our own gods yeah. i think that's a spiritual issue at play here now mike you and i were talking just before the show started about like different categories of yeah. of uh, transgenderism, mm. and, and there's some that that's that's well. You were talking about explain that to the folks. Yeah, so you know, I've I've written I've done a lot of coverage on transgender issues, and what from what I've seen, there are several different types of transgender mm. people. You know, there's there's severely mm. mental mentally ill people that are dealing with gender dysphoria, and they they probably need some urgent uh, psychological care. 
There's, you know, people that are well adapted to society, but they still do have gender dysphoria. So, you know, nothing, you wouldn't find many, many additional mental um, health issues with them, but they do see themselves as the opposite sex slash gender. And then there's people that just want to cash in on the, um, the social gains that can be had from identifying as transgender. As soon as they do it, they get all this new attention. You know, usually you'll see it from uh, kids that have autism or even Down syndrome. Oh, you'll see it with people that aren't very popular. All of a sudden they become, you know, transgender and, oh, they're the talk of the town. 